Well, welcome back. We're glad that you're with us. Those of you around the world watching by DVD, you're joined by the people here in the classroom. And we're going through a study on spiritual gifts. This is session 23 on the spiritual gift of teaching. In our last session, we talked about the spiritual gift of prophecy. And we said that prophecy comes in one of three forms. It is speaking forth the truth a message of God in one of three ways, either providing a warning to people, giving them comfort, or foretelling the future. Moreover, we said that it is very serious business to be a prophet, that you must be 100% correct, or the punishment is death. In Old Testament times, that meant you're going to die physically. In New Testament times, it does not mean that someone's going to die physically. Instead, their death would be a spiritual death, a relational death, a separation from both God and from the people of God. In many times, they are asked to leave the church because they can no longer be trusted as a prophet. For some reason, what they shared was incorrect. It was years ago now that I had a chance to sit under one of the greatest teachers in the United States today. His name is John Ortberg, O-R-T-B-E-R-G. Some of you would have heard of him. He pastors Menlo Community Church out in San Francisco. And he's heard uh, around the world. He has a website that people listen to his messages. And he's always very, very informative as well as being entertaining. And I sat under his teaching with a number of other people in a session at a conference called How to Teach. And I thought it was a wonderful opportunity. My gift is teaching. I'll sit under John Ortberg. And I'll never forget one thing he said to those of us who are teachers. He said, when you teach, you always want to take credit for it. There's a part of us within that wants to say, look what I did. Look at how brilliant I was in sharing the message. Look at how I came up with just the right illustration or I hit a bullseye story that really made the mark. I knew which verses to share and the people were well served. He said, that's quite natural. He said, but you and I know it isn't us. It's the Holy Spirit working through us. And that when God shows up, God will not share his glory with another. He wants the credit. And he said, however, as a teacher, there always will be this tension between I want credit, no, I'll give credit to God. He said, on this earth, we'll never get rid of that tension. And if you do, stop teaching because it means you're taking all the credit. We'll never be able to just give it alone to God. It was great advice. Every teacher, especially those who teach or preach in a larger setting, they kind of like being in the spotlight. They like the attention they got, the notoriety they get. It's only human. And what John Ortberg was saying is, in this life, because of our sin, we'll never fully give our, uh, the credit to God. So notice that tension, and when you notice that you're taking credit, stop, confess, give it to God. Excellent advice for those of us who are teachers, and if you are one, you know what I mean. Well, let's take a look at Romans 12, 7, where teaching is first mentioned, and Romans 12 is one of the four passages that we've mentioned that spiritual gifts are talked about. Uh, we have been using 1 Corinthians 12 quite a bit, and over the past few sessions, we've come back uh, to Romans chapter 8. So now in session 23 on teaching, we're going back to Romans 12, and we're going down to verse 6, where Paul writes, we have different gifts according to the grace given to us. If a man's gift is prophesying, let him use it in proportion to his faith. If it is serving, let him serve. 
If it is teaching, let him teach. If the person has the gift of teaching, he is responsible for using that gift, for getting out there and sharing the message with the people of God in a variety of settings. It isn't always that a teacher stands before a large crowd. A teacher stands before a classroom. A teacher can be in a small group. And a teacher can be in a family. A teacher can be with colleagues at work. And a teacher can be with a friend, just sharing life and teaching. In fact, in teaching, you teach everywhere you go. You can't help teaching. It's so much a part of you that you do it all the time. In fact, whatever your spiritual gift is, you can't help doing it. You do it all the time, wherever you're going. It's that sometimes it's uh, the Holy Spirit works through you in such a way that there is spiritual impact and a person is drawn to Christ in a way you cannot explain. And you can't take credit for it. Well, let's look at the Greek words for teaching as we've done before. Here in Romans chapter 12, verse 7, the word is didasko, didasko. And it is G1321 in Strong's Concordance. But when he uses the word teaching, uh, teachers, he's... <laughs> but when he uses the word teachers, He's using a slightly different Greek word, didaskaios, didaskaitlas. It is in the Strong's Concordance, G1320. Well, let's see where these words play out in some other parts of Scripture. We look at Romans 12.8. Now let's go back to the other passage that we've been referring to, 1 Corinthians chapter 12. And I encourage those of you who are watching by DVD, don't just listen to this. Be an active participant. Be someone who is a learner, who is actively involved, opening your Bible, listening, learning, and gaining your own insights as you do so. Well, we're going to Romans 12 down to verse 28, right at the end of the chapter. And we'll see in here where uh, teachers come into play. And in the church, God has appointed first all uh, first of all apostles second prophets third teachers and then later he goes through rhetorical questions and he says are all apostles are all prophets are all teachers and he means no so in this context he's talking about the office of teacher that there is an office that's people are given who are viewed as people in the body as teachers, respected, noticed, appreciated, and given the opportunity to teach. But the gift of teaching itself is, there's a different Greek word for it, and that is didasko, didasko. And most of the time we're referring to that verse. Well, there is one more passage that we have not, in fact, gone to that I've talked about it being one of the four passages that are important when it comes to spiritual gifts, and that's Ephesians chapter 4. And if you'll turn to that and look for verse 11, I'll explain that this passage, the reason we have not talked about it yet, isn't because it's unimportant. It's because it gives a spiritual concept involving a uh, spiritual gift of teaching that we want to make sure that we spend an entire session talking about. In fact, in this particular uh, book of the Bible, in Ephesians 4, Paul lays out the whole plan for here's how the church should work with all the spiritual gifts. Here's, in fact, how they should play together. And that's a very important part. It's one thing when we use our gifts ourselves. It's another thing when we use it as part of the body united. So let's go to verse 11 of Ephesians 4, and we'll see a list of gifts given once again, much like we saw at the end of 1 Corinthians 12. It was he, meaning God, 
who gave some to be apostles, some to be prophets, some to be evangelists, and some to be pastors and teachers. So apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers, pastors is shepherding. And there are some commentators who believe those two go together, pastor, teacher. I think in context, it's talking about two separate offices, one of a pastor who is shepherding the congregation and one who is a teacher who is providing instruction for the congregation. But in this particular case, he's talking about the office of uh, being a teacher and he uses the, a different Greek word that talks about office and it is different from the other two and not one that we need to talk about now. What's the meaning of the word uh, teaching? Well, it's to instill doctrine into the listeners. There are certain great doctrines of the faith. Salvation. Uh, there's the doctrine of the second coming. There's the doctrine of angels. There are doctrines throughout the church that are re reflected in the Bible and teachers teach doctrines. They also teach principles and they teach those principles within topics. So one of the meanings is to explain, to expound on a topic, merely to give instruction. And teaching is meant to bring spiritual growth to people, helping them to develop in their faith and grow from being a little baby to being a mature Christian. And as they mature in Christ, the teacher begins to go deeper and deeper into Scripture. Now, as I've told you many times, this is my gift, and it's one of two that I have. I also have knowledge. And so I can speak with some confidence about what this gift is. I've seen God use it in many, many cases. And the one thing I know about teaching is the more I teach, the more I realize how little I know. That gives you some confidence, doesn't it? And what I mean is the depths of Scripture go so deep that you could never get to the bottom of it. You could never completely understand any one thing. The other thing I've learned about teaching is that when you teach, you learn far more than the people who are taught. Because you spend a great deal of time outside of the actual teaching, preparing for teaching and learning about it and often learning things that you don't share within teaching, but you still have learned it. So two principles that I've learned that are helpful for me to remember when I teach, I learn far more than the people I've taught. And the second one, when I teach, I learn how little I really know and how much I need the Holy Spirit to be my guide and to be my teacher, as Jesus had promised. Well, we have a very simple definition to teaching. To impart instruction. Impart is a word that simply means to give to impart instruction, but it isn't just to give it. Impart it means to help make it part of the person, to impress it on the person to such an extent it becomes a living part of their lives and that they can use it and apply it to their life. And what's the purpose of teaching? Well, quite simply, it's to make the Word of God clear so people understand it and apply it. Now that's a sentence that I did not pick up from a, from a uh, commentary. That's a sentence that I wrote years ago to help me say, why am I teaching? And when I teach, I want to make the Word of God so clear that people not only understand it, but when they leave, they'll take what they were taught and use it in their daily lives. And it's important, whatever gift you have, to know exactly what's the purpose. When people 
write a book, when authors have written a book, there's a trick that they say they use. In front of them, as they're writing the book, they try to write a little sentence about this is the main message of the book. And as they're writing, they're constantly looking at that and going, okay, that's the main point I'm trying to say. In your spiritual gifts, you should understand the main point of what you're doing, the purpose. For me, I want to make the Word of God so clear, people understand it and apply it in their lives. Understanding, clarity, application. Those are the three things that I seek to do as a teacher, and it, it's like cutting through the fog for me gives me a clear perspective on what my role is. Well, the role within the church of teaching can be uh, listed within the categories that we've talked about before. And I remind you of these because it gives you a broad picture of the different components of the church. Founding the church, instructing the church, caring for the church, managing the church, giving a special message. And this falls clearly in instructing the church. It falls within prophecy, it falls within teaching, and at times it will fall within another gift where you're a shepherd and you're teaching. So those are the three main gifts that fall under the cluster of instructing the church. But truthfully, all of us teach. We can't help but teach. I mean, if you're a parent, you teach your kids. If you're a boss, you teach your employees. If you're a coach, you teach the athletes. Everywhere you go, you are a teacher. You may not have the spiritual gift of teaching, but in hearing about teaching, you can become a better natural teacher at home, at the workplace, out in the community. The gift mix associated with teaching is quite wide because many uh, different offices and gifts use teaching. Some of the gifts associated with teaching are knowledge and wisdom and faith. But sometimes there are other gifts, not just the support gifts that come alongside. I mentioned prophecy. I mentioned shepherding. But there is one other that I didn't mention that's very important and that's evangelism. An evangelist is teaching about the faith and helping the person understand what it means to come to Christ and to accept him personally. So teaching is used in many different gifts. In the commentaries, Carl Westerlin talks about teaching and he gives this definition, the ability to expound the Word of God and explain what God has revealed. All right, expound means to talk about. So to talk about the word and make sure there's a clear explanation about what God has said in the word. Another commentator that we have not used previously, John Brown, says that in Ephesians 4.11, which we looked at previously, it links pastors and teachers together. But Romans 12 lists those separately. So there's not complete clarity on is it one gift or two. Pastor, shepherd, uh, pastor, teacher, shepherd, teacher. I believe that they're separate gifts, separate offices, but linked very closely together. Romans 12, 7 is talking about the spiritual gift of teaching. Ephesians 4 is talking about the office of teaching. Very different. There's another aspect of teaching that's important for us to understand. What's the difference between teaching and preaching? Isn't preaching teaching? And when you're teaching, aren't you preaching? Well, they all fall within that broad role of instructing the church. And the two are, are linked together, but quite separate. When a person is preaching, it is one way. I talk, 
you listen, you take what I hear or what I say, you hear it and then hopefully apply it. It's just from here to there. That's preaching. Teaching is I say something, you hear it, but I give you opportunities to talk back, to take part, to be involved in the educational process. You see, teaching isn't just telling. Teaching is helping people to discover truths about the Bible for themselves. And in many ways, it's a much harder aspect of teaching. When you go to a uh, adult Bible study class or a small group and there's interaction back and forth, the teacher has to have spent a great deal of time thinking about not just what do people want to learn, but how should I present it in a way that they can learn it. You see, many times teaching is helping people to discover truths you already know. I may know some principles in the Bible, but how much better if I can create an instructional method where you learn the same truth I know and I didn't tell you. And when you learn it, you go, aha, I get it. And it's so much more effective when the person's learned it themselves because there's a sense of satisfaction and there's much greater likelihood that they'll apply it to their lives because they discovered it. You didn't tell them what you discovered. So preaching is putting and crafting together a message in a way that will be memorable and that will also be accurate and that will allow people to both understand and apply it. And preaching is very important in a church. We all know that preach, preachers make a big difference, that when the pastor has the gift of teaching, it's enjoyable to listen to the pastor. When the pastor doesn't have the gift of teaching, it can be very boring. You can start counting the seal, ceiling tiles or thinking about, what do I have to do this afternoon? And so it doesn't mean that the pastor has to teach. I think churches should look for an elder who has the gift of teaching, who may not be the pastor, but has the respect of the congregation, and therefore brings a message that is both relevant and instructional and applicational, and free the pastor up to do what the pastor does best. That's not what the church does now, but perhaps we should think about doing it. Visual aid. I want you to think about an open Bible. Because that's what a teacher does. They open the Bible for you and they help you understand what's in it. Just as an open Bible helps us to understand the truths of God, so the people with the gift of teaching help us understand those truths in a way that it's clear, in a way that we can take it and use it in our lives. Sometimes the Holy Spirit will give the teacher special insight into what's being said. Many times, the words that the teacher uses are words the Holy Spirit has used in teaching the teacher on what to say. And we just simply say what we've been taught. But it is important to honor, respect everyone with the gifts, but especially a teacher because they affect so many people. Will you please open your Bible to James chapter 3 and verse 1? Because there, there's a message for all teachers, one that should be taken to heart, and one that's very sobering for teachers, and they have to really think this through if they want to stand up and teach or preach. In James 3, chapter 1, in a section that James is writing about the use of the tongue, and he begins with uh, teaching, he says, Not many of you should presume to be teachers, my brothers, because you know that we who teach will be judged more strictly. And there is a high standard to be a teacher like there is for a prophet. 
There's nothing in the world that, uh, in the word that says, like a prophet, we experience death. But it does say, we'll be judged more strictly. And I've talked about this before. TBS Seminary is a nonprofit project. Our joint effort will bring about the common purpose of making Christian education available around the world and developing good Christian servant leaders. You have a unique opportunity to partner in this effort through your prayer and or financial support of TVS Ministry. For more information, please visit tvsseminary.com. Let's look at a biblical example of teaching. Let's go to Exodus chapter 4, way in the front of the Bible. Exodus chapter 4, where in the early sections of this, it talks about how Moses was called of God to lead the people of Israel out of Egypt. And he's, Moses isn't the Moses we think about now. Moses has just come from 40 years in the wilderness. He's come back and now God's calling him to a special task, saying, now you're prepared to do what I created you to do. And Moses gives all kinds of excuses why he can't do it. What if they don't listen to me? What if they say, who are you that you should tell us? I mean, excuse after excuse after excuse. And then in verse 10, he gives this excuse. Moses said to the Lord, Oh Lord, I've never been eloquent, neither in the past, nor since you have spoken to your servant. I am slow of speech and tongue. He's saying, I don't want to do this. I'm not a good teacher, please. And the Lord said to him, Who gave man his mouth? Who makes him deaf or mute? Who gives him sight or makes him blind? Is it not the Lord? What God is saying is, don't you believe I could help you teach? And he says then in verse 12, now go, I will help you speak and will teach you what, you, uh, what to say. Years ago, I was asked by the pastor of a different church I attended before my current church, and it was much smaller. And the pastor was going out of town, and he asked me to give the message. It was the first time I was ever going to speak and preach, and I was scared. And I came to this passage. I didn't even know that this verse was there, but it was a verse that jumped out at me. And it was like God said to me, now go, I will help you speak, and will teach you what you are to say. And every time I teach now, I use that verse. I want to give you a brief example from my personal life. I went to a th celebration of an anniversary of the church I attend now. And there are so many people who go to our church, we had to go to a big stadium, an indoor stadium, and it was filled with people. And we had a wonderful time of celebrating. And afterwards, we're walking out and everybody's excited and filled with joy for what God has done. And I hear a voice in the crowd, Steve, Steve. And I look around and I see somebody coming. I don't know who it is. I'm looking at him going, you know me? I know you? And he comes up, he says, I just want to tell you, I took a class that you taught at our church, it changed my life. I had to stop and go, oh my. I don't even know this guy. I don't even know he was in the class. If he walked by me on the street, I couldn't have told you who he was. And he says that because of what God did through me, his life was changed. And all I could say was praise God. And to say, this teaching stuff is serious. You can change lives. And so please God, do so through me. Now I have some questions to ask you. Has God worked through you to, number one, gain biblical insights and principles easily and then share them with others effectively? Number two, has God worked through you to make Bible truths easy for others to understand and apply? And number three, has God worked through you to convey to talk about spiritual truths clearly 
and concisely so people understand. That is the gift of teaching. And it is a wonderful gift, and I am grateful to God that it is my gift. And so please join us next time when we continue looking at the gifts associated with the mouth, and we're going to talk about a controversial gift, the gift of tongues. Please join us.